So welcome everyone again to our CSAT May DC program and in this program in the previous class we had discussed the basic concepts and all those previous year questions which had been asked from the year 2011 to 2018 and I hope you all are clear with all those questions you had you, you could have been you, you would have been practiced and you will be well prepared in the topics HCF and LCM and today today's topic is ratio and proportion it is a bit easy topic and again the significance is that almost 13 questions have been asked in from the from directly from the topic ratios and a bit more questions will be in than other topics which, which, which is having some concepts uh, or some application of this ratios and proportion. So, I hope you all will be clear and convinced with the number of questions which have been asked because about 13 questions have been asked that means about one or two questions will be asked every year. So, you can make sure 2.5 marks or 5 marks every year from the topic ratio and proportion. So, in the topic of ratios, what do you mean by ratio? What is the basic concept of ratio? A ratio is just a comparison, right? While writing the ratios, if we are telling that the salaries of uh, Ram and Mohan are uh, two persons in the ratio 3 is to 4, that means what? That does not mean that the ratio, the value, the actual amount of that salary is 3 and 4, is not it? It actually means that the point which made equal Ram and Mohan is having salaries in the ratio 3 is to 4. That does not mean the Ram salary is 3 or Mohan salary is 4, is not it? Maybe it may be 300 is to 400, 300 and 400. It may be 3000 and 4000. It may be 30,000 and 40,000. So, this means that ratio is the simplest comparison tool by which we can just analyze what is the connection between, what is the comparative measure or what is the comparative stand between these two persons or these two numbers, is not it? In this, in the, so, the one more thing you can make, you will be able to understand is that this ratio will be always expressed in its simplest terms. We will not say that the ratio of Rams and Mohan salaries in the ratio 30,000 to 40,000, is not it? There is no purpose of doing all those things. If you are uh, referring the term ratio, it means that most of the time it will be in its simplest form. That is the idea behind the concept of ratio. So, in day, everyday life we will be experiencing such terms like speed, speed means 30 kilometer per hour, is not it? 30 kilometer per hour or 30 kilometer per one hour, this is also a ratio, right? The difference is that these two parameters are indicating different quantities, still it is a ratio or else we can say salary rupees per month, 30,000 per month, per month means 30,000 by for 30 days, is not it? So, we are comparing one parameter or one number with respect to another number, is not it? So, all those are the direct examples which we, which we have been experiencing or uh, which we met meet in this real life practical situations. So, in the case of ratio, we will, we know that it is a, a set of comparison and we understood that the concept is that it should be expressed in its most reduced and most reduced or possi possibly the simplest form we will rep uh, represent the concept of the fraction of ratio. So, here in the case of proportion, proportion is somewhat different in the case. It is because in the case of ratio we will represent it as 3 is to 4 or 4 is to 5 or 6 is to 7 whatever will be the uh, comparison between two numbers we will put it as a ratio. But in the case of proportion the things different because 3 is to 4 is proportional to 6 is to 10. Isn't it? 4 is to 5 is proportional to 8 is to 10. 
3 is to 4 is proportional to 6 is to 8. These are the examples of proportion. So, I hope this will be clear for you to understand the concept of proportion. This means that two ratios are getting equal or we are equating two ratios or we are connecting two ratios. One can be connected with another or else you will be uh, thinking the concept that why we are writing 6 is to 8 equal to 3 is to 4, it is already 3 is to 4, right. So, what is the purpose of that? The purpose is that, purpose is the best example is that the question given here. You are traveling in a, you are traveling 30 kilometer per hour, right. How much distance will you travel in 5 hours? How can you write that? 30 kilometer per 1 hour. If so, x what kilometer will be travelled? How much we do not we do not know? How much time is there? 5 hours is there. By using this proportionality concept, we can find out the distance travelled which will be 30 into 5 that is 150 kilometers. Right. So, here comes the application of proportion, ok. So, this is the basic concepts behind ratio and proportion. This class, this concept I am just briefing up because there is no more concept uh, hidden behind this ratio and proportion. This is evident for all of you. You could have been uh, describing or using the term every day in everyone's life. So, there is not much to explain in the case of concept. So, directly we will move on to the problems. So, this is the first problem asked in 2016 CSATs and one more case is there, uh, the case of mixtures. What is a mixture? The mixture, there is one liquid in vessel A and there is another liquid in vessel B. Is it? We are just mixing this liquids in A and B and what will be the ratios of those mixtures. Those basic concepts will be referring to the concept of mixture which we will describe when the question comes, ok. So, that is the concept of ratio, proportion and mixtures. I hope just a basic platform on which we can build. So, the first question is that 30 gram of sugar was mixed in 180 ml water, right. So, I am taking the ratio of sugar in water, sugar in water, vessel A is there, vessel B is there, vessel C is there, right. So, in such a case, first case in vessel A, 30 gram of sugar is there in how much water? 180 ml of water, right. That is the first case and the second case, 40 grams of sugar is there in 280 ml of water and in the third case, 20 gram of sugar is mixed in 100 ml of water. They are asking which one will be the sweeter one or which one will be less sweeter. So, that is the concept of, the, that is the question being asked. So, by writing these terms as this much huge terms, we can't analyze or we can't compare which will be sweeter. This is all those are different quantities, right. Then what will you do? We will put in the concept of ratio. So, by using the concept of ratio, what will we do? We will just simplify and represent it in its simplest form, ok. Which is the simplest form? 30 is correct. 0 can be cut out here, 3 is divisible 1, here it is 6. So, the ratio is 1 is to 6. So, the ratio of sugar to water in vessel A is 1 is to 6, right. And the case of vessel B, it will be in the ratio 1 is to 7, right, 1 is to 7. And in the case of C, this is 2 by 10 is 1 by 5. So, the ratio is 1 is to 5. Now, it is somewhat easier to interpret the result, is not it? Why? The numerators are same. 
only the denominators are different if denominator increases the value decrease isn't it so you know the concept this is the basic idea everyone knows that if denominator is increasing value will be decreasing so if denominator is less which is less here 5 is less isn't it so this value will be much lesser value so c will be having more quantity of sugar with respect to water isn't it c will be having if 1 gram of sugar is taken in each of these quantities which is having lesser water this is having lesser water so it will be more sweeter so c is more sweeter than quote b and c is more sweeter than a which is to be which is what is asked here solution in vessel b is we need to interpret the relation between solution of vessel b and that with a and c so here b we sorry b we got the concept that c is sweeter than b also c is sweeter than a and what about b and a here it is bigger value isn't it this is smaller value so this is 6 ml water 1 gram sugar 7 ml of water 1 gram sugar which will be sweeter a will be sweeter right so a is sweeter than b so that is b is the least sweet mixture and hence the option will be sweeter than no it is not sweet b is not sweeter b is not sweeter b is less sweet than that in c so option d will be the answer so we will move on to the next question two glasses of equal volume are respectively half and three fourths filled with milk so and they are then filled to the brim by adding water so i am taking two glasses of equal volume let it be 100 liters both in a and b two glasses these are those two glasses of 100 liters each right what is the question they are having they are filled with milk up to 1 by 2 here 3 by 4 here right that means what is 1 by 2 of uh, 100 liters 50 liter milk is there in container a right 3 by 4 of b means 3 by 4 of 100 right this is also of 100 this is also of 100 so here 3 by 4 of 100 means 75 liter milk is there in container b right so that is explained in the first sentence we have assumed 100 liters is there and we just considered out of that 100 liters how much is the milk the rest will be water why because they are telling that they are then filled to the brim that means it is filled with water so the remaining is 50 liter water here the remaining is 25 liter water right and then what is happening they are con their contents are poured into another vessel so what happened we are mixing these two containers we are mixing the milk solutions in a and b into a third container c which will be much a bigger container of 200 liters imagine whatever All right so here we are having 50 liter milk here we are having 75 liter milk while mixing we will get 125 liter milk right and here we are mixing 50 liter of water plus 25 liter of water we will get 75 liter of water right so we have got the condition right then we what we what we need to know we need to know the ratio of milk to water what is the ratio of milk to water that is 125 milk to water 75 right cutting by 25 this will be 5 and this will be 3 5 is to 3 option d will be the answer understood so in this case one important concept is that they are not telling any specified quantity in the question that is why we were able to assume a quantity and find correspondingly sometimes maybe the question is will be not uh, 100 liters they will be uh, intending to 
uh, explain a question related to 60 liters, whatever will be there, the ratio will be same, 5 is to 3, isn't it? The ratio will be same. If some quantity is specified, we won't be able to assume any value because they won't match. The here, no quantity is specified, no value is mentioned. So, we just need to find the ratio, hence we assumed a value. Most of the problems in this mixtures can be attempted very easily with this basic idea. Okay. So, we will move on to the next question. The same question. Two equal glasses are there of same type are having one third and one fourth full of milk. So, I am taking 12 liters. Why taking 12 liters? I have to take one third and I have to take one fourth, isn't it? So, I found out what the LCM of 3 and 4. This is why we explained the concept of HCF and LCM in the very first class. That time I told you that concept will be applied in most of the problems of LCM, especially of LCM. So, here also we applied the concept of LCM. We found out that LCM of 3 and 4 is 12 and hence we took assume the value as 12. If we take the value of as 100 as in the previous question, we need to take one third of 100 as 33.3333 something like that. It will be hard for us, isn't it? We are assuming some value for making what easy calculation. So, why to make that calculation much complex? So, we take 12 liters of uh, 12 liters uh, contain the glasses of capacity 12 liters such is that in A and B, isn't it? Then what? Then one third is full with milk. What is one third? One third of 12 that is 4 liter of milk is here, 1 fourth of 12 liters, 3 liter of milk is here, right. So, the rest is what? Rest is water because they are filling up with water, they can't keep this thing empty, isn't it? They are businessmen, so they will fill it with water, who cares, isn't it? So, this 4 liter is here, the remaining what is there? 8 liter is there, 8 liter is of water and here 3 liter, remaining what? 9 liters are there, 9 liters are water, isn't it? So, we are then again the same concept, we are mixing this all those into a new container, C, whatever it be. So, what happens? 4 liter plus 3 liter, 7 liters of milk will be there and 17 liters of water will be there. So, option is 7 is to 17. So, the basic questions, basic ideas, simple concepts, we will get the answer. Here also, no value is specified, only the ratios are specified. Hence, we assumed a value and found out the result. This is the ratio 7 is to 17. Okay. Now, we will move on to the next one. Again, I had been just grouped all those questions previous year of the same type here. Then we will discuss the uh, miscellaneous types later in the uh, second session. So, here there is a milk sample. The same milk sample is here. Don't know why they are interested in this milk, milk samples. Milk sample with 50 percent water is there, isn't it? And if one third of this milk is added to equal amount of pure milk. So, I had to take some one third. So, I will take 90 liters for easy calculation, okay. So, that one third will be become 30 and here there is a milk sample with 50 percent water, 90 milliliter is the total capacity and so with having 50 percent water. So, 45 liters of water, 45 liters of milk, isn't it? So, what happens? One third of this milk is added to equal amount of pure milk. One third of what milk? 90 liters. That is one third of this milk. 30 liters is added to 
equal amount of pure milk. So, this 30 liter will be having what? 15 liter of milk and 15 liter of water, right? If this is having 50 percentage ratio, this will be also having 50 percentage because what? Why? Because this thing is taken from this solution, right? One third of this solution means it will be having the same proportion of milk and water, right? So, milk will be of 15 liter, water will be of 15 liter is added to equal amount of pure milk. What it is that equal amount? This one is the one which we took, isn't it? It is mixed with equal amount means equal amount of milk, 30 liter of milk, isn't it? They are telling that one third of this milk solution is added to equal amount of pure milk. So, plus 30 liter of pure milk is added and hence they are, what they are asking then, water in the new mixture will fall down to. So, here now it will go become 45 liter of milk and 15 liter of water. That is 15 liter of water out of 45 plus 15, isn't it? That means 15 out of 60, that is 1 by 4, that is 25 percentage. Isn't it? 25 percentage is the rate of the uh, proportion of water in the new one. Previous it was 50 percentage, right? Previous it was 50 percentage here, red got reduced it to 25 percentage. Isn't it? In what one, in, in what solution? In this 60 liter solution of this is the solution of the new mixture. So, this is the basic idea which we had been doing in the previous questions and we just repeated with some added values, right? Because something is taking and we are mixing them. Previously, we are having two vessels, we just, we need just to mix it with them. But here, the, uh, the fact is that some solution is there, we need to take this thing some portion of this thing and mix with the pure milk. The condition is the same. Same condition, same concept. So, here a new question. In the new question, what happens is that we are leaving the concept of glasses and milk. We are fed up with drinking all those milk. So, now something interesting is a coin collection. In a rare coin collection, there is one gold coin for every three non-gold coin. Ratio of gold coin to non-gold coin is 1 is to 3. 10 more gold coins are added to the collection and the ratio of gold coins to non-gold coins would be 1 is to 2. Here can I assume that there are 100 gold coins? No. This is why I told you earlier we can't assume any value if some value is specified in the question. There it is specified 10 more gold coins are there, is not it? So, that is not possible. So, hence what we will do? Whatever is unknown, we will put it as x. So, 1x gold coins, 3x non gold coins are there, is not it? Previous old age consumption, uh, convention of whatever is unknown, we will put it as x. So, if x gold coins are there, 3x non gold coins will be there. Then what happens? 10 more gold coins are added to the collection, isn't it? We are adding 10 to it. Are we adding anything to non gold coin? No, nothing is specified. So, nothing is added to here. What will be the result? Result is that ratio becomes 1 is to 2, isn't it? So, x plus 10 by 3x equal to 1 by 2, 2x plus 20 equal to 3x, so x equal to 20. What is this x? It is a number of gold coin, isn't it? Number of gold coin is x, which we got it as 20. So, now how many coins are there? x gold coins were there. 3x non gold coins were there 
and we added 10 more gold coins. So, they are asking the total number of coins in the collection x we got as 20 plus 3 into 20 plus 10 that means 3 into 20 60 plus 20 80 plus 10 90 coins are there in the collection together ok. So, this is the concept of basic concept of ratios and the most simplest problems which everyone could attend comes from the topic of ratios. And we will see the last question of this part of ratio. This is a some, somewhat simpler part. We can classify it as age problem, problem concerned with ages, but this is some application of ratio. A father is 9 times as old as his son. Age of father is 9 times as old as his son's age. I am assuming let f be the age of father, s be the age of son, f equal to 9 times that of s. Similarly, age of mother is what? 8 times that of son, isn't it? So, this is the given condition. Sum of ma father's and mother's age is 51 years, f plus m is 51 years. So, I am substituting this one here, this one here. What happens? 9s plus 8s, 9s plus 8s equal to 51 years, 17s equal to 51 years, s equal to 3 year. What is the age of son? 3 years, that is option D. So, with this, we are winding up this part and we will discuss the remaining questions in the next part of the session. So, thank you.